so here is your free response question of the day. So for this one, I'm going to do it on a separate piece of paper. Um, so this was the actual question used in 2018. So here's a graph, G, and in the question it says that G, uh, that G is equal to the derivative of F. So it's important at least to write down there to understand there's that relationship. So you're looking at G, but that is also the graph of the derivative of F. So let's start the question. And it goes from, uh, and then it says that the parabola you see is described like that. That's from 3 to 6. All right, A, it says that F at 1 equals 3. So remember, the derivative here tells me increasing and decreasing. So I don't actually have a value for F. So F at 1 equals 3. And then it says, can you find the value of f at negative 5? So it gives me a starting value of 3. So I'm going to start there. But I want you to notice that normally we start at 1 and then we're given a value in front or ahead of 1. So what's the value at f at 3 kind of idea where you're going forward? This one you're actually going backwards. So when you go forward, you're adding the integration and when you go back you're going to subtract. So I'm going to subtract and I'm going to integrate the increase or decrease and it's negative 5 I'm looking at. And it's from negative 5 to 1 is what I'm looking at. Oh this is right here I should call that the derivative. Of x. Oh, so there's the setup. So again, why am I not adding? Why am I subtracting? Because I'm going backwards. So you're given a value at positive 1, you go back in time to negative 5, you need to subtract either the increase or decrease to know what it was before at negative 5. So now I need to answer this. So how do I integrate off a graph as I find the area under the curve? So let's look under the curve. So from negative 5 to negative 2, that's pretty simple there. That's just a rectangle, it's actually a square, 3 by 3. So that number is 9, but recognize it's under the graph, so that means that it's going to be a negative answer. So that negative 9 is that square. And then the next shape I see under is this triangle. Again, it's going to be negative, so half the base times the height. So the base is 1, so half of that is 1 half times 3. So again, it's going to be negative. You can go negative 1.5. Then the last part, uh, to get us to 1 is 0 to 1. Well, that's a triangle, and it's above, so it's going to be a positive number. So half the base times the height. So again, that's 1 half times 2, or just 1. So half the base times the height, and that's it. So it's 1 half times 2, or 1. Notice that that is positive, and that's a great answer. You take a picture of that, be done. B. Let's read. It says, evaluate from uh, 1 to 6 off the graph of G. So, let's write it down, what we're doing. How do I integrate off a graph? Well, from 1 to 6, so we'll uh, break this up. So, from 1 to 6, we're first going to go 1 to 3. So, that again is a square, 2 by 2, so that's 4. But then, I have after... 3, from 3 to 6, it's completely different. So I'm still going to integrate from 3 to 6. But for 3 to 6, I can't integrate off the graph. Instead, I need that equation that's given. So from 3 to 6, this equation is given. That's what I'm going to integrate. So I'm going to write that down. So from 3 to 6, it's 2x minus 4 squared dx. I wrote it down right. And so this one I actually have to integrate algebraically and not off the graph by what's given. So let's do that here. First of all, um, I'm just going to treat this uh, as an anti-chain problem. So what is the hook that should be here? So the derivative of x um, is 1, but there's a 2 there. So what was it and what it became? There needs to be a 2 in front. So then... I can simply integrate by doing the anti-power rule. So there's going to be a 2 in front, 
the power rule here, add one, and then divide by that exponent. And we're integrating from three to six with the two times in front. Now the last step is just to substitute in. So I'm gonna substitute in six. I'm not gonna simplify it. Oh, be careful the parentheses don't go all the way to the bottom. So that three is by itself on the bottom. And there you go. So you first plug in six, and then you plug in three, and that's a great answer, it's done. That's the integration from one to six. All right, part C. Uh, part C asks, oh, where are we? From negative five to six, and what open intervals of the, of the graph of f? So we're looking at f at x. And what we're looking for is increasing. And I'm looking for concave up. Now recognize the derivative of f is equal to g. So if something is increasing, that means the derivative or g would be greater than zero. That means it's just a positive number, it's above the axes. Concave up in this situation for this would be if the first derivative is increasing. So what I'm looking for is above the axes and increasing. So can I look off the graph? Where is it above the graph? and increasing. So nothing here to the left. So this is above and increasing. So from 0 to 1, I'm going to write that down. Where else is it above the graph and increasing? So above and increasing from 4 to 6. And then you write down y. So I'm just going to write that down. Am I off the graph? Am I off the camera? There it is. So why did I pick those intervals? For f of x is increasing concave up because the derivative is bigger than zero on those intervals. And the derivative is increasing. Done. Take a picture. Done. All right. One more part. Part D. It says find the x-coordinate for the point of inflection. So I know the point of inflection for what? Uh, for f. So the point of inflection is when you take the second derivative and it's equal to 0. And there needs to be a change uh, in the increasing and decreasing or concave up and concave down. So let's just connect this. So we know that the first derivative is equal to g at x, which means the second derivative is equal to the first derivative of g when I look off the graph. So when I look off the graph, I'm looking for increasing and decreasing. And off the graph, if I see increasing and decreasing at that x value, it creates a point of inflection. It could also go the other way. It could go decreasing and then increasing. So what am I ultimately looking for? Are the turning points. So do I have a turning point? And that turning point would be a point of inflection. Okay, now let's look here. So the beginning of the graph is constant and then increasing, not that. So it can't go constant to increasing. It has to be increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So the constant part negates it. So no, here we go from increasing to constant, no. Constant to increasing, no. No, because of the constant part. No, because of the constant part. So where's the only x value where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa? And it's when x equals 4. So we're going to write down that answer. So when x equals 4, f at x has a point of inflection because... Why 
Why? Ah, because the, and we already wrote down some things that we're looking at. Because the second derivative changes from, now in this case it's decreasing, increasing. They love those words, decreasing and increasing. So when you can write a statement and you can use those words, increasing, decreasing, they love that. Way better than sign changes or plus or minus. That's what we're looking for. You could also show them a visual of what you did to help describe it to know that the second derivative at 4, and this is going from negative 5 to 6, so no arrows at the end, that you can also show this for the, that you can say that it is that for that. But just doing this is not enough. You actually have to write down what that means using those beautiful words. All right. Is that it? Part D, done, right? This is Matt, over and out. Thank you for doing your work. Till next time.